So since I got a bunch of requests to do stuff for Unreal Engine 4, I figured I would do a quick one here about creating some custom rubble. There's nothing fancy in here, but the cool thing is you can do it all inside of Unreal Engine. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so straight out of the gate, uh, here we are inside of Unreal Engine 4. And I've made this little temp scene here. We're going to pretend this is the level that you want to make the custom rubble for. Now I say custom rubble, what I really mean is custom, a custom mesh that's built from other meshes that already exist. So this is really for level designers or, well even visual artists who want to quickly knock something up that's specific to a location within a level. So you could be combining anything, but we're going to use rubble because that's a language that most of us understand. So what you're going to need are some meshes to build with. So uh, what I've got here you know, is a set of uh, uh, nine little rubble meshes. These are bricks and rocks and things. And the only requirement on them is that they uh, will, will react correctly with physics, which means they have collision. So I just threw a convex hull on them uh, inside of Unreal Engine to give them something to collide with. And that's really it. Uh, these all share the same material as well, which is uh, which is optimal, yeah, because in the end your your combined mesh is going to all share the same material, which will be efficient for rendering. Now the way that we do this is we just drag these into the world at various locations, just sprinkle around the area. Try try to get one of each, just because for even distribution, you know. And I'm going to make a few more copies of this, and I'll be back in a second and back. So what I've done is I've just copied those same meshes uh, a couple times. I've changed the scale on them a few times too so you can see we have some large ones, some small ones, and that'll give a nice variety when we're uh, actually making the rubble mesh. So all we have left to do is these all have collision like I was saying. So we have to go to the details panel and turn on the simulate physics checkbox. And that's really where the magic happens. What that means is that when I turn on the simulation in the uh, viewport editor, uh, they're going to start reacting to physics, which means they're going to fall. And they're going to collide with each other and bounce around. So we'll just make that happen. We'll turn on simulate. And there they all go. They fall to the ground, they bounce around, uh, they gather up in the, you know, the little cracks and gullies, and that's what we want. So if you're happy with this, great. If not, um, you can actually click them right here uh, while we're simulating and adjust them and you can knock other you know, rocks around, you can push them together and just make adjustments until things are the way that you want them to be. I mean, it's not you know, the, greatest, <laughs> the greatest thing in the world. I mean, you will find weird stuff because you are dealing with physics. But on the whole, you can tweak and get things to look the way you want them to look. There we go, pile in the corner, some stray ones here. Good. Okay, so the key to getting this to work now is that you have to, to select them all, which doesn't work in simulate mode apparently. So uh, that's okay though, I'll just keep selecting them and you know, keep hitting my select matching key until it has reselected them all, which I think it has. Okay, good. Now. If we just stop the simulation up here with the stop button, um, they're all going to snap back to where they were. The key to making this work is to right click them and tell it to keep the simulation changes. Uh, clicking that says, okay, yeah, this is where I want these meshes to be you know, from now on. So stop the simulation. Some, some pop up here again, which is weird, but you can just delete those. But on the whole, uh, they all stayed down where they fell according to physics. And the next step will be to combine these together. So while visually this is what you want, uh, efficiency wise this is not what you want because these are all still uh, individual static mesh actors and each one is a draw call unto itself and that's just not going to work for a shipping game really. So uh, the key is to use a really cool feature that got added to Unreal Engine a couple of versions back. Uh, it was experimental for a while, but now it's live, and I feel comfortable recommending you know uh, its use. So what you do, 
uh, is select all the meshes that you want to participate uh, in this merge action. And go up to the window menu and developer tools, merge actors. And this just basically tells you all the actors that it's going to merge together. So there's all the rocks we have selected. Uh, there's some options here at the bottom. We're not going to mess with it. Uh, you can play with it on your own if you'd like. And we're going to tell it to replace the source actor, which basically means that once it's done merging, it's going to replace all those individual actors with this new one that we're creating. Uh, you'll see what that looks like here in a sec. So merge actors. It wants to know where to store it. We'll put it in that same, that same folder. Tell it to go ahead, and it's done. Now, this, uh, this pile of rocks here, you can see when I click on it one time, it's like, yep, that's one actor. And, it, and it's placed it here in my folder. So if I open this up, you can see, yes, this is one merged actor. So now I have a custom rubble piece that's sitting in my level, and, you know, and it fits my geo exactly, and I didn't have to hand place every single little thing. Now there are pluses and minuses to this. Uh, the pluses being obviously that you can have a custom piece for your level and it renders efficiently. And uh, if those meshes had light maps, there's our regular texturing and here's the light map. It repacks the light map to, you know, to reflect all the meshes that got merged together. So you know, it does you, a, you know, it does all the hard work right there. Yeah, it sets the light map resolution to 256, which I, I guess is, uh, I'm not quite sure what that is. It's probably picking that out of the air, but you can adjust that obviously on your own. Yeah, so uh, that's that. Uh, however, there are some downsides, and we'll talk about that in a second. So nothing in life is free, you know, and of course this has disadvantages. But depending on your project, you know, you can weigh the pros and cons and see how it goes, right? Uh, the negatives for this are that uh, once you merge those meshes together, uh, uh, they don't have their collision anymore. So you either have to regenerate it or have an artist do it or just live with a not having collision, which is you know, okay for rubble, you know, uh, sometimes depending on what you're doing. Uh, the other disadvantage is that none of these are instanced anymore. This is essentially a hero piece. You know, it's a one-off unique mesh that's built for this area, which means that it's eating its own memory and nothing else is really sharing resources with it aside from the material, you know, which is nice. So if you have an area that's built up of bricks that look like this and they're all using the same material you know, and the rubble shares it, there's at least some shared efficiency there. So there's that. And there's a few, you know, uh, you know, other disadvantages which may drive the art team crazy you know there's no source art for this you know since you generated it in the editor and so if they want to work with it they have to export it from the editor and that kind of thing but you know like i said these are all trade-offs that you can decide are worth it or are not worth it uh, take this knowledge and do with it as you will so preliminarily um i just wanted <laughs> really really preliminary